picture coming up now. Okay, uh, Apollo 10, uh, Houston, we're getting it in black and white now. Uh, stand by for the uh, color. Uh, we got the color now, Apollo 10. Uh, we have the uh, earth in the uh, center of the section. It uh, seems to have a uh, bluish tinge to the background. We see the uh, uh, a very bright blue, a uh, pale blue, I should say, in the uh, center of the earth right near the terminator. Could you describe that for us, over? Right. Uh, you can see the South Atlantic Ocean there. And uh, the orange spot to the right is uh, the North African continent. You can see basically the Sahara Desert and above that the Mediterranean Sea. The rest of the world is pretty much in case of clouds. The solid cloud cover that's covered the North Pole and the most of Europe is still with us today. At this time as we look at the Earth we are 210,000 miles away. We've only got about 9,000 more miles to go to the moon. Uh, we're traveling approximately 2,500 miles an hour relative to the Earth. Also, in about 15 minutes, we will enter the shadow of the moon and make our major bird to enter lunar orbit in approximately three hours. And also, in about 15 minutes, we will enter the shadow of the moon and make our major bird to enter lunar orbit in approximately three hours. Uh, at this distance, the Earth looks slightly smaller than a tennis ball to us, at a little bit larger than a golf ball. And I hope it shows up the same way on your screen. Uh, Dan, uh, it's and again, a... uh, Af South uh, Africa. Go ahead, Charlie. Roger, I was just going to uh, add that we can uh, see the uh, uh, northern part of Africa. It uh, well, had a bluish tinge to it at first, but now it's coming into a... Uh, sort of an orangish brown and uh, we can see the uh, South Atlantic and uh, and the uh, cloud covers uh, very well. It's, uh, the colors are uh, very good. Over. Uh, Roger. Again, the, the Sahara Desert, the Atlas Mountains, Morocco, Libya we can see from here. It is an orange, uh, a brownish orange. The nighttime, the Terminator has cut across the Suez Canal and most of Egypt and is now covering most of South Africa. I can see Spain. It is a greenish brown and is completely contrast with respect to North Africa. Uh, however, you may have difficulty seeing it on your set due to resolution at this distance. Again, you can see uh, Brazil, but it's covered mostly with clouds at this time. Uh, Roger, 10. Uh, we uh, have a... We can this see... time, Apollo 10. Go ahead. Go ahead, 10. Uh, Roger, at this, Roger, at this time, Apollo 10 is going through the preparation for the lunar orbit insertion burn. And uh, the next, after we lose contact from the Earth, the next time that we come around, we will, to have contact with the Earth, we'll be at approximately a 60 mile by 170 mile orbit around the moon. Uh, right now, we cannot see the moon, even though it is rapidly accelerating it towards us towards it by its mass. Over. Uh, Roger, Tom. Uh, we copied that uh, very good description. Uh, we uh, have uh, difficulty seeing any land mass uh, in our uh, picture except for uh, North Africa, and we can see the Terminator cutting across Africa. Uh, Europe, the land masses of Europe are uh, just sort of fade into a bluish color. Uh, it looks like an ocean to us. Over. All uh, right, uh, really the, the only major land mass we can see is exactly what you can see on your set there. And uh, that is uh, the North African continent. Most of Europe is covered by either high clouds or, or some scattered low clouds. It's very difficult for us to see it too. We'll give you a quick uh, shot on the interior now and then we'll terminate uh, this pass. We'll go inside now. Uh, Roger, very good. Thank you much for the view. Uh, we'll be standing by for the inside.
Apollo, Apollo 10, Houston, you're uh, coming in on the black and white monitor now. Uh, Ten, we have the color now. Uh, the resolution on the 85 is, uh, is uh, I think, better than uh, most expected here. Uh, the sun is uh, uh, pretty bright in the background uh, coming in through the, uh, I guess that's uh, the hatch window, uh, uh, side window, I guess it is. The, uh, the patch is uh, visible, but it's uh, pretty dark uh, due to the uh, background uh, uh, being so bright. Ten, uh, uh, do you read over? Go ahead, Charlie. Uh, Roger, uh, thought we'd lost voice there for a moment. Uh, you're coming in five by now. We got uh, your arm patch now that's uh, very uh, uh, dim uh, at uh, this setting. We had uh, Gene's uh, smiling face there for a moment with, uh, along with your patch. Uh, the the uh, the flag is uh, coming in a little bit better now, however, it's still uh, pretty dark due to the, uh, the bright background. Oh, that's a lot better there, Ken. Over. Uh, there, we have a good uh, view now. Now we can see uh, Gene again uh, in his... Waving, uh, Gene. We, uh, Barbara's in the viewing room. She says hi. A little difficult to get the proper lighting up here, uh, Charlie. Uh, the spots flooded out, and uh, and we got to deflect the light. Uh, Roger, we see you uh, trying uh, uh, hard on the thing. Uh, it looks like the uh, the uh, ALC is uh, averaging out, and uh, the background looks uh, real good. The spacecraft back along the hatch. Uh, uh, Tom's hand is uh, covering his window is uh, real clear. His face is uh, dark though. Over. Uh, that's those whiskers there, Charlie. I see. Thank you very much, uh, John. That wasn't quite... It's called about a 70... That's known as a 72-hour shadow, Charlie. Yes, sir. Apollo 10, uh, Houston, we now have the 210 at uh, Goldstone. Uh, the uh, granularity and the resolution is uh, a heck of a lot better here. At, uh, you're coming in real great. Over. Okay. There's our overhead hatch window there. Uh, Ken, uh, Houston, we see some uh, specs on your uh, hatch window. Could you comment on those? Yeah, 
Well, they come from uh, the dumps that we're making overboard as we progress along. I don't think any of it is due to the thruster firing, Charlie. Right. Houston, the, uh, the hatch window is uh, phenomenally clear. There's what appear to be a few dust particles on the outside, maybe a couple of smear prints on the inside. Uh, the uh, the right-hand uh, window has got a little bit of a smear on the outside, not necessarily particles, but just a general smear. And the uh, left uh, the left side window has got some definite particles uh, lashed across it.
Charlie, it's uh, definitely getting a little darker outside. Roger, 10, that's good news, over. Looks like we're right on trajectory then. Okay, here's another look at the Earth through the 210-foot dish at Goldstone. And I hope the colors are coming through a little better. Again, the, um, the west coast of North Africa is still a bright orange. And the central part of, uh, of North Africa is starting to turn purple as nighttime approaches over the uh, western part of Libya and the eastern part of Tunisia. Again, it's awful hard to see Spain because Spain is a greenish brown this morning. You have the Mediterranean and the uh, Atlantic covered with some clouds, so it's awful hard to see any part of Spain. But again, the Earth dust this morning looks a little bit smaller than a tennis ball as we're 210,000 miles from the Earth and now less than 9,000 miles to go to the moon. Now, this is Apollo 10 signing off. We'll see you later today. Uh, thank you much for a good show, uh, 10. Uh, appreciate it. The 10-foot dish, 210-foot dish has uh, given us a very good resolution, and the colors are a lot sharper. Over. Roger, 10. Uh, we think it uh, might be Earthshine. Uh, we have an update to your LI-01 uh, burn card. Over. Stand by a second. Uh, Rog, no hurry on this. That was Gene Cernan describing Apollo 10's entry into the lunar umbra, the night time of the moon. The early part of that TV transmission was through the 85-foot antenna. We then acquired the 210-foot antenna and had a better picture. And Mrs. Jean Cernan watched this television show uh, from the viewing room here in the control center. At 72 hours 57 minutes, Apollo 10 is 7,987 nautical miles from the moon. Its velocity, 4,360 feet per second. That's with a lunar reference. Houston, we just had a hand over to Goldstone. Uh, do you read now? Over. Oh, yeah, I thought that was us. We're back up uh, high gain, uh, narrow beam, Charlie. Uh, Roger, 10. Uh, network uh, just advised that uh, we won't hand over. Uh, we won't hand over until 7305. Over. You will not hand over until 7305. Okay. And what is that uh, that update you have for us? Uh, Roger, it's uh, two of them. Uh, one for your LOI uh, burn card. Uh, we have some update to your angles. And uh, we have a uh, map uh, update, rev number one. Uh, over. Okay, give me the uh, rev one first, Charlie. Uh, Roger, uh, LOS is 0754825, 0755252, 
zero seven six two two five eight. Over. Okay, I got map update ref one zero seven five four eight two five zero seven five five two five two and zero seven six two two five eight. Uh, Roger, right, that's a good read back. Over. Okay, and uh, go ahead with your update on the uh, preliminary uh, LOI. Uh, Roger, on it's on your burn card uh, that uh, you have. It's an update to the roll pitch in uh, yaw angles. Uh, roll is now one seven nine degrees. Pitch. Six eight. That's zero six eight. Y'all is zero one one. Over. Okay, Charlie. That must be for the uh, for the abort card, right? Uh, that's affirmative. Uh, Ten. Over. Roger. Roger. Okay, Charlie, I got the uh, roll of 179, pitch of 068, and y'all 011 on the uh, LOI 15 minute abort card. Uh, that's affirmative, Stan, over. This is Apollo Control. Those times that were passed up on the Lunar Revolution number one map update, the first time was the loss of signal time, that's 75 hours, 48 minutes, 25 seconds. The second time is uh, at which Apollo 10 will pass 150 degrees west. That was 75, 52, 52. And the third time was the acquisition of signal time, 76, 22, 58. We're two hours, 49 minutes, 46 seconds away from the lunar orbit insertion burn, according to the uh, preliminary maneuver pad passed up to the crew a short time ago. This time will be updated uh, again prior to that burn. We expect to update the LOI pad about 74 hours and 10 minutes and that ignition time may change a little bit. This is Apollo Control at 73 hours 26 minutes. Apollo 10 is 6,863 nautical miles from the moon, velocity 4,464 feet per second. We're in conversation uh, with Apollo 10 now. The lamp is uh, bright as day, uh, courtesy Earthshine. All right, you understand you're getting a lot of Earthshine up there, 10, over. Right. Apollo 10, this is Houston. It looks like you're drifting into the limit on the high gain antenna. Uh, you'll be handling the Omnis on board. Uh, looks like you're coming up on Omni Delta for max signal strength over. Roger, Ed. Houston, Apollo 10, as you can see, we're made just a couple of pulses. We're slowly drifting over to our LOI-1 attitude. This is Houston, Roger out. Hello, Houston, this is 10. Uh, go uh, ahead, go ahead, 10, over. Okay, uh, resurfacing has started, and uh, I'm uh, at the point where I've got the water flow on. Uh, I'll keep it on for two minutes. Roger, Roger we, we copy. copy.
Hello, uh, 10. Uh, Houston, uh, we show uh, two minutes on the uh, water. Uh, we, it looks like you've got some uh, water into the evaporator. We suggest you turn it off. Over. I understand you don't want me to activate it at this time. I just want to auto on the steam pressure and the water flow. All right, that's the correct procedure. Over. Okay, that's where we are right now, and I'm reading about uh, 0.23 uh, on my steam pressure. Right, do we copy? Over. Down below uh, about 44 degrees. About 44 degrees on the glycol vap out temp. Roger. Gene Cernan is resurfacing the primary evaporator. That's the one that dried out in Earth orbit on launch day. Goldstone, Houston, contact, Met 1. Goldstone? Uh, Roger, I am receiving an echo. Uh, negative, I am not receiving an echo. I am. When I transmit, I am getting an echo. Meet me on that, too. Roger. Hello, uh, Houston. <coughs> Correction, hello, Apollo 10. Uh, Houston, uh, we have your uh, final LOI-1 pad uh, ready to go and uh, your P-27 update. Uh, if you're ready to go uh, with this, uh, we are too. Over. Uh, Roger. I'll, for the P-27 update, I'll go to CMC except now. Roger. You're an except. Over. Uh, Roger, 10 out. Okay, Charlie, I'm ready for the final LOI-1 and uh, make it a good one. Uh, Roger, 10. Uh, this is LOI-1, SPS, GNN, 62554, plus 095, minus. Zero one seven zero seven five 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 three three one. Now eighty one is minus two nine one three eight minus zero five six one two minus zero two two niner. A uh, correction zero two nine or nine or seven three five five two three zero three four two <coughs> apogee is zero one six nine or two plus zero zero five nine or five two nine or eight Two four five five four two niner seven five two sextant star is one six two one four six three niner four the rest of the pad is in a okay uh the set stars are the same uh, your uh, roll line is two four one two four zero and zero one three. No knowledge. The limb weight is the same. Over. Stand by one. Minus 
Ten uh, Houston, uh, we have your uh, target load and state vector in. Uh, computer is yours. Over. Okay, thank you. This is Apollo Control at 73 hours 38 minutes. And we have just completed passing up the final lunar orbit insertion burn pad. Calls for an ignition time of 75 hours, 55 minutes, 53 seconds. A delta V of 2,982.4 feet per second. Duration of the burn, 5 minutes, 54 seconds. That burn is targeted for an apocynthian of 169.2 nautical miles, a paracynthian of 59.5 nautical miles. Charlie Duke also passed up to Gene Cernan the acquisition time given no LOI burn. If the L LOI burn does not take place, we will acquire Apollo 10 at 76 hours, 12 minutes, 21 seconds. We had earlier passed up an acquisition time for a good LOI burn at 75 hours, 48 minutes, 25 seconds. Control Officer William Burton has reported to uh, Flight Director Gary Griffin that he saw the evaporator take a drink and he feels warmer.
this is Apollo Control uh, with a correction. That last time I gave you is the LOS time, 75, 48, 25. Acquisition time with a good LOI burn is 76, 22, 58. We'll continue to stay up live here for any uh, conversation. In the meantime, let let me recap those times. And uh, Houston, uh, do you have uh, any questions about the standard setting for the 250 millimeter lens in the lunar orbit? Over. Uh, no, it looks like we're going to have to use an f/5.6 and 125th since uh, the 250 millimeter lens doesn't have an f/4 on it. Uh, Roger, uh, Tom, uh, I was just talking to Jack here, and uh, he says uh, uh, we'd like to use an F5.6 uh, at 1 250th, uh, except near the terminator, and then stop, then go down to 1 1 25th. Over. Okay, we'll do that. Roger. This is Apollo Control. Apollo 10 will go behind the moon and we will lose signal at 75 hours, 48 minutes, 25 seconds. If Apollo 10 does not do the LOI burn, we will reacquire the spacecraft at 76 hours, 12 minutes, 21 seconds. If the LOI burn is a good one, we will reacquire Apollo 10 at 76 hours, 22 minutes, 58 seconds. We now have clocks counting down in the control center to LOS and to ignition. We're showing two hours, three minutes, 10 seconds to loss of signal two hours, 10 minutes, 35 seconds to ignition. This is Apollo Control at 73 hours, 56 minutes. Apollo 10 is 5,463 nautical miles from the moon velocity 4,640 feet per second. Flight Dynamics Officer Phil Schaffer reports that at the time of lunar orbit insertion, Apollo 10 will be 98.4 nautical miles from the moon and 215,847 nautical miles from the Earth. Got her voice, Houston Comtech. Goss Conference. Got her voice. Roger, I read you loud and clear. How many? Right, your five are also. All right, thank you. Well.
Hello, Apollo 10, uh, Houston. Uh, we'd like to give you a hack on your uh, mission timer. Over. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Roger, uh, 10. On uh, my mark, it will be uh, 74 hours and 14 minutes even. Stand by. Mark, 74, 14. Roger, Houston, Apollo 10, we are synced to right on with you. Roger. And Charlie Duke gave Tom Stafford that mark two seconds early because Apollo 10 is at a distance now in which there's a two second delay in communications. This is Apollo Control. There are five astronauts at the Capcom console at the present time. The two regular Capcoms for this shift, Charlie Duke and Bruce McCandless. In addition, Gordon Cooper, the commander of the backup crew for Apollo 10. Ed Mitchell, the backup lunar module pilot. And Dr. Jack Schmidt, the scientist astronaut who is a geologist and who has worked with this crew on uh, lunar geology. Houston, we show sunrise at uh, 74 hours and 50 minutes and 11 seconds. Over. Roger, 74, 50, 11. This is Apollo Control at 74 hours, 44 minutes, and Charlie Duke is talking to Gene Cernan. Hello, Houston, Apollo 10. Go ahead, 10, over. Uh, I cycled the Carl fans at about 71 hours. Uh, should we go ahead and cycle them again before this burn? Stand by. Hello, Apollo 10, uh, Houston. We'd like you to uh, stir up the cryos again uh, when you normally do it in a uh, pre-burn checklist. Over. Okay, fine. And Houston, 
Captain, looking at the Earth right now, and uh, looking at the South Atlantic off the uh, coast of uh, South America, in about the center of the globe, is a brilliant, bright, very, very bright reflective light. You can see it with the naked eye, and then again see it with the uh, monocular. It's a very brilliant spot, just a spot, uh, intense light from the Earth. Uh, Roger, in the South Atlantic uh, 10, over. Yeah, I think it looks to me like it's right smack in the middle of the subsolar point. Just a continuous white, bright, brilliant light. Just a pinpoint. <laughs> uh, 10, uh, Houston, uh, we'll check it out with the guys in the back and uh, see if they uh, uh, think that's a uh, subsolar point or just a reflection uh, angle of incidence type thing, over. I'm sure it's just a reflection, but first time I've ever seen anything like that. Uh, Roger, we'll see if we can come up some ideas. As a matter uh, of fact, the okay, the brilliance of the light is just now fading, and it uh, definitely is right in the middle of the subsolar point, and it's uh, the reflect the reflection is totally gone at this time. Roger, copy. But what it was there was bright and brilliant. Copy, over. Uh. Hello, Apollo 10, uh, Houston. Uh, we have uh, two COM uh, switches for you. So we'll put you in uh, lunar orbit COM configuration. These are S-band auxiliary to down voice backup and tape recorder forward to forward. Over. Roger, Charlie. Do you want those now? That's affirmative. Ten over. Okay, uh, tape recorder to forward, uh, and I'll go down voice backup. Does that also mean you want the voice switch to off? Uh, that's uh, negative. Ten over. Okie doke. We are now in down voice backup. Tape recorder is forward, and those are the only two changes. Uh, that's affirmative. Uh, that's affirmative, uh, Ten, and uh, we've uh, pulled the room and you're a go for LOI. Over. Thank you. This is Apollo Control at 74 hours, 50 minutes. We're 58 minutes four seconds away from loss of signal when Apollo 10 will go behind the moon. We're one hour, five minutes, 23 seconds from the yellow eye burn. Here comes the sunshine. Well, we copy 10 at 74.50 thereabouts. John Young reporting sunrise. Reset point. We we'll take one next time around, Gordo. I bet it looks like Vultures Row down there today, doesn't it? Yep. You can't stir with a stick down here. just turned the page in the flight plan and uh, we certainly appreciate the insert uh, that you put in there. Roger.
this is Apollo 10. Now, we still have a beautiful view of the Earth uh, right out through the center hatch window. And where it says a little bit smaller than a tennis ball this morning, it's right now about the size of a handball. Roger, we copy, Dan. That's a pretty good eye. Don't let him kid you, Charlie. Looks like a dime to me. That was Gene Cernan's comment there at the last. Chris says when it gets to look the size of a squash ball, let him know. Roger. The backup command module pilot, Don Isley, has joined the rest of the backup crew here in the control room. Apollo 10 is 3,012 miles from the moon, velocity 5,201 feet per second. Houston, we'd like you to select Omni Charlie so we can get a couple of minutes of high bit rate. Over. Houston, uh, this 10, you ought to have Omni Charlie now. Uh, Roger 10, we're reading you five by out. Apollo 10, uh, we'll start through the P-30, P-40 series at approximately 75-30, over. Uh, Roger 10, we copy, we'll be watching. Okay, Charlie. This is Apollo Control, it's 75 hours, 14 minutes. Apollo 10 is 1,892 miles from the moon. Lunar referenced velocity 5,723 feet per second. We're 34 minutes away from loss of signal and a little over 41 minutes away from the lunar orbit insertion burn. This is Apollo Control at 75 hours, 29 minutes. Apollo 10 is 1,134 nautical miles from the moon. Lunar reference to velocity 6,345 feet per second. And Tom Stafford has just informed us that he's going into some of the computer programs preparatory to the uh, LOI burn. Houston, Apollo 10, we'll start through the P-30, P-40 series now. Over. Uh, Roger 10, standing by. Over. Okay, and we know what that is. That's due to the conic integration. Roger. 